And welcome back to this awesome tutorial series where we learn the ins and outs of Unity and Unity C Sharp. Um, so, last time we left off, we created this lovely code for our coins that when we pick them up, they get destroyed and points get added to our system. Also, when we hit spacebar, we can't fly off the face of the earth by continuously pressing spacebar, but we have to be grounded. So that's pretty cool. Um, and now we're going to add a little rotation feature to our coins so that they don't look like church wafers or, you know, from the symbolic pictures of a wafer and it's gold and it's flat. We're going to make it rotate. And we're going to do this by using a feature we, a function we've already added to our player, which is our player rotation uh, function. So right here where we have a player rotation um, we're going to do basically the same thing except a little differently to show you two ways to skin a cat so let's get started on our scripts folder I'm going to right click create C sharp script and I'm going to call this coin rotation enter open up the script reload all and we're going to need one cool thing, and we're going to need an, um, actually, we're going to hold that off. We're going to first just make it rotate. And to do that, we can do game object dot transform, right? Oh, dot transform. And you might be thinking, wait, on our player script, we didn't do that. We w did this whole get component thing. And that is a one way to do it. But since these are static variables, such as the game object inside the collider, we don't need to do get component. We can just do dot and the, um, the script or the component. So with that said, we don't need to do dot get component. We, can, we don't even need to nest the variable to make it look pretty. We can just do game object dot transform. And remember, a lowercase g makes it the current game object. Capital G makes it the class game or the variable game object. So lowercase g. Um, so after that, our transform dot rotation. We know this by now, or rotate. And here we need a vector three Euler angles. And last time we did uh, zero or information, which is our horizontal input, I believe, right here, and then zero. But someone might be trying to be cool and classy, and they might just do vector three dot up. And you're like, what does that mean? Well, it means it's a shorthand way of writing this. In fact, it's actually writing this. So, new vector 3, 0, 1, or 0, 1, 0. And that's what it's writing. Uh, however, we don't want that. We are wanting just the vector 3, and then we want to multiply the information. And it's not, not exactly this, but it works similarly to new vector 3. And... Um, it actually just does this type of information in the rotate and so on. Um, however, we're just going to uh, eliminate that, eliminate all that writing just to doing vector 3 dot up. Now, we can multiply this times a speed, so times 5. And, well, we were talking about, well, how are you multiplying a float with a vector? Isn't that, like women going to men's bathrooms? Isn't that like, you know, uh, multiplying apples and oranges and getting apples? Well, not really, because how does multiplication work? Uh, right? We're, we're going to go back to algebra, and we're going to erase all this, and we're going to see a vector 3. We're going to have 0, 1, 0. And we're multiplying all this times 5. 
Well, now it's kind of like foiling, except not really. It's going to multiply each value. So it's going to do this. Bam. Um, bam. And like that. Um, and with that in mind, we see that this will return. In fact, 0 times 5 is 0. zero or 1 times 5 is 5. And 5 times 0 is 0. And this will be our new value, which is exactly, and this is not a lesson sign, it's a terrible parenthesis. Uh, and that will actually return what we had here, except our horizontal goes from 0 to 1. We're just going to do a constant 5. And that's what that happens here. We're going to hit semicolon and hit en uh, enter and save, not enter and save, just save. Control S and hit play. Now, when we see that happening, we see nothing happening because the script isn't attached. So we can drag and drop all this code. We can do this type of thing to all of them. But, but let's say you made too much, you don't, or uh, too many, uh, you don't want to do that for all of them. You can just select all of them and just drag and drop that. Hit play and we'll see our coins rotating. And you're like, well, that looks like a, you know, wind chime almost. You know, they're just rotating and all at the same speed. So let's make it look cooler by adding a little bit of variety to it. So there's two ways of doing it, and I'm going to show you both ways uh, because I'm not cool of a cat. I'm, I'll, you know, I'll scratch your back. Um, and here we can do public float uh, speed, right? And we can then go to each one and then just change the speed. It will be equal to 5 off the get-go. And we're just going to paste speed here. Hit save. Now, remember, since it's public and I load the variable here, it's 5. If I change the value in the public variable, if I make this 2, it will still equal 5 unless I refresh the code right here. Reset. So, to um, not have that, we're just going to... I just want 5. But remember that if you're changing it, changing it in the inspector uh, to make it finite for that object. If you want to you know, assign it, always add 2, then make it 2 here. And now we're also going to have an int that will be random public int uh, int random number and the random number will be assigned at start and random number number will equal random number or random number, or equal random, because we're making a random range, we're making a random uh, a, a sort, random, and doing dot range makes it clamp from uh, the smallest number to the largest number, so range, so the range between which numbers we want to get it, the max and min, or the min and max right here, as it says returns a random float number, um, to our um, object. So let's write that here. Dot range. And it returns a float. However, if the random, random range can only store an int. And so it will just grab an int. And we're going to do our lowest speed will be um, 1. And our highest will be speed. And we're going to do semicolon here. And you're, you're like, wait, you know, it's not working. And that's a fact because now we're going to men's bathrooms and, you know, for women. And that's because an int cannot accept decimals. So if this is 0.5, it just won't work. It'll look really crappy. And so a good way to change this is by actually just truncating any decimal. And to do that, all you have to do is open parenthesis right in front of it, int, close parenthesis. 
And bam, we just did a typecast. How cool is that? We've just converted a man into a woman, basically. Uh, or an apple into an orange. So, that cool thing right here does not round. It will, if its speed is 3.9, it's 3. Just remember that. And now, we can grab this random range, or random number, and multiply this. And now we're going to have a problem here, right? Where you're like, you know, dude, this is a float. It all vector 3's only except floats. Um, and this might not um, affect it since we're just doing multiplication. But if you're doing a method like this... Yeah, you're gonna get some. You're you're gonna get mono developed screaming at you right here. So, to convert ints to floats is not as easy. And there's a hundred ways of doing it. But if you want to be really cool, you can just do this. I'm gonna blow your mind. Times one point zero f. And now it multiplies, it leaves that zero, and then the computer will be happy. But, again, for this purpose, we don't need to do that. But if you ever have a problem, int, to float, error, blah, 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 you know, um, then just do this. And I'm going to hit save. And then we're going to go into our Unity uh, game, hit play. And, in fact, they are, they are spinning at the same rate. And the reason that's happening is because our random range is at 2. And so we want to change that to, let's say, um, 7 or 5. And when I hit save, I'll save my scene and save my project. Um, and you'll see that uh, the coins now spin at different intervals. And if you want to make it even more crazy, we can even go as far as 9. And now, when you hit save, of course, we'll have more variety. Um, and I like 10. Some of them will go to 10, and that will be pretty crazy. Um, so, you know, that's just... You can play around with it, but it's a pretty cool feature. Um, and it's used pretty often for random events that happen in-game. So, uh, pretty cool feature. I like how they turned out. Next, we're setting up our enemy.